I thought this was hilarious and maybe a little bit sad, but very smart strategically, all in all in one. And that is John Cena coming back. John Cena obliterated poor Austin oh Theory. God. Like Austin Theory, Theory couldn't even get a word out of his mouth. Oh my God. And Cena's was... just destroying this kid. So if if you guys haven't, go back and listen to Dave and Brian from this morning uh, yeah. on Observer Radio talk about this. So I react. To, it's so funny because I had the same reaction that Dave did to, to the words that he used. I said it out loud. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it was wild. It was wacky. It was almost like seen as like the old heel. And <laughs> so you got this young guy that's a U.S. champion. And he's like, yeah, you got it because you got the look. That's about it. There's nothing else there. Dodo. Yeah, you're you're, you know, you're trunks like, away from being a jabroni. You're your trunks away from being a jabroni. I, 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 it did no good for Austin Theory. I'll tell you that. Now, if if he's gonna get his win, you know, and you got this, but we, you're hurting both. It's not. It's not helpful. I, I just found the verbiage really bizarre. But they do that. Some, to me, it was a very old school WWE way of doing a promo. The babyface is trying to get over with the audience, and he's gonna play the rock role where he's just gonna berate you and embarrass you. Yeah. And and now you're like, wait a minute, who's the baby face? Who's the heel here? Uh, I I don't know. I, I found it weird. I found that whole promo weird. It did nothing for Austin Theory. It just made him look terrible. Austin Theory needed a moment bigger than your bald spot to come back on Cena. Yeah. And then I think it would have been okay, but he just got eaten alive every step of the way. And... He, but here's the brilliant part that I thought. So it's very clear John Cena's hometown. He's getting cheered. The fans are eating up everything that he says. They see him as bigger than WWE, right? They know. They see him doing the movies. He's the peacemaker. He's going to be in Fast 10. So he's bigger than life. He's, he's outside of this WWE universe. He's above it. And so what they did is they used him on this show to bring out Cody Rhodes. Now, they have done this in the past, and it has not always worked, but it's always been at a time when they wanted to reverse the identity to the fans of uh, of a wrestler. You remember when John Cena finally beat The Rock at the, the Once in a Lifetime match part two, Electric Boogaloo. They, they had that match. Cena wins. Rock raises Cena's hand. That was not what the fans wanted. I think at that point, the fans were kind of okay with both of them going away. But John Cena was staying. The fans were like, nope, we're not buying it because we don't really like John Cena in the way that, that you want the uh, yeah. us to like John Cena. Then you remember the second time they did this. Roman Reigns wins that battle, the Royal Rumble in Philadelphia. The fans are booing the hell out of this dude. And Rock comes out again. And he does the thing to point to Roman Reigns, and they're not having it. Why? Because they are tired of Roman Reigns at that point, just like they were tired of John Cena at that point. Here, the fans are still into Cody. So when they do the same thing where John Cena brings out Cody, I thought it was really smart. It's sort of like they sort of learned from past times. Like, let's not wait for Cody to get boring and to get the fans turned against him before we sort of anoint him as the next guy. Let's do it now when he's hot. And it made for such a, a such a better moment, a better segment. And I think it may have even, you know, extended whatever, whatever Cody's going to get out of this baby face thing. Uh, I think that is going to help keep him fresh and keep him cool. And they're doing all the right things with him, saving Sammy at the end of that show. Fans love Sammy, right? They, you know, they, they, they want to see Sammy, do better. And so I think all that stuff is really smart. And it's all about keeping Cody fresh as a baby face, because I think they probably have the same fears that I do is when he uses those $10 words on, on SmackDown, like no human would use in normal conversation. I'm like, Oh, come on, just be a, be a cool dude, be a normal dude. And he can't, he can't really do it, but that's not going to bite him. I don't think now it may bite him later down the line, depending on what happens, but I like I like that of it. Did I like John Cena bearing Austin Theory? No, but at the same time, it may have been one of those things where, 
you know, maybe Cena expected Theory to come back a little harder to to be a little bit more aggressive or whatever. But maybe maybe Theory couldn't. Maybe he didn't have the the words that he was supposed to memorize that that were were good enough for that moment. Yeah, I I I'm I'm happy with the way that the Cody thing is going for sure. I think it's a positive. I I, I yeah, less and less do I think there's going to be a rejection of Cody. Uh, and you know, here's the thing, right? Their audience is younger skewing, especially for the, you know, for for a guy like Cody. WWE does a good job at get, getting kids to watch. How do you not cheer for him? He looks like a superhero. And he's a good guy, you know? So they they're, they're going to rely on that a little bit, but I, I, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, I guess, uh, anticipation of people rejecting him. I don't think that's going to happen with him. I think his story is strong enough where, you know, him winning and dethroning uh, Roman at WrestleMania, it, it will be a feel good moment at the end.